It's the Des O'Connor Show. Starring Jack Benny. And special guest star, Connie Stevens. With J.D. Douglas. The New Faces. The Dolly Birds, plus two. And Jack Parnell and his orchestra. And here is your host, Des O'Connor. Please don't spoil me. <laughs> That's what they've been doing to me all this week. They've been spoiling me because it's the first week of our new television series. And everybody in our family is so excited about a new TV series. Because for one thing, it means a whole new wardrobe. Not for me, for my wife. And thank you for the many letters you sent in. And a lot of them were asking me about my, my daughters. You know, and I've got two daughters, and I thought perhaps you'd like to see them. Because every, every star brings his family on. Have you noticed that? Sooner or later on his show. Usually at Christmas, but my lot will work any time. And I thought you'd like to meet the family. The small one is Samantha. She's six and a half. The big one there with the long hair, that's Tracy Jane. She's eight and a half. And that's my lovely wife, Gillian. And she's, uh, she's watching the show, so you can make up your own mind about her age. <laughs> Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like a starry summer night. So covered with a stay. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, I'm yeah. delighted to Thank see you. you. I'll, I'll be off now, Mr. No, 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 come here, yeah. come here. Just come on down. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I always say to me, get off, so well, before Alf, you say... Alf, Alf, I've been thinking about it. Now, just relax. Hmm? I do say get off. And I, how can I come out here and sing a song like Everything is Beautiful and Be Nice to Your Brother and then tell you to get off? That's not right. Yes, I'm sorry about no, that. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. It's me that should apologise. Because you didn't come out here to spoil the star's performance. Oh, no, no. No, 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 You came out here mm. because secretly, in your heart, you nursed a little desire to be the star. You could see your name up there in those white letters. <laughs> There's the spot. There's the camera. It's the Alf Epitimus Alf. No, no, I get off. No, I don't. She might as well. You'd like to see Alf work, wouldn't you, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. There you are. There you are. This is your big moment. It is? <laughs> By show? Yes. yes. Shall, shall I tell him a story? Anything you want. Yes. Uh, could you just move over? You're in my light. <laughs> uh, good, good evening, uh, ladies and, and things. Um, I, I'd like to tell you a little story. Uh, um, I don't know any stories. Uh, could you tell me one? Well, it, it'd be an old one, do you mind? Oh, I like your stories. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Let me see. Uh, right. Now, there, there's a fella had a, a, a pain in his ear. Pain, pain, pain in his ear, yes. see? And then it, it spread across uh, to, his, to his nose. Yes. And then it eventually went over to his, to his other eye. Yes. And it was uh, sort of an inflammation. Oh. See, an inflammation. So his friend said, what you should do is get, get a tea bag. Put the tea bag, and that will draw out all the inflammation. But unfortunately, the man put the tea bag on much too hot. The bag broke, and all the leaves went into his ear. Now then, he rushed down to a doctor who happened to be an Indian gentleman. Oh, yes. And he said to the doctor, look in there, tell me what you see. And the doctor said, oh, my goodness me. I see a tall, dark stranger. <laughs> Could I tell that? One? Please, please. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, there, there was this man, you see, and he had a, a, a congregation in his ear. <laughs> and it, it, it started off uh, in his nose, and it went to his, his ear. So <clears throat> uh, he went to see his friend, and his friend said, oh, to put a tea, tea bag 
on your ear. And, and it... Are you all right? <laughs> he put a tea bag on his ear and it, it burst and went in, into his ear. So he went to see the doctor, who was a, an Indian gentleman, and the doctor said, hey, up. The, <laughs> he said, he said, you're going to see a tall, dark strainer. <laughs> Did you, did you enjoy doing that? No, Mr. O'Connor. No? No. Would, would you do something for me? Yes. Tell me to get off. Get off. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll get off. I'm, I'm sure I didn't mean any harm. This is, you know, something you should... Get off! Get off! Yes. <laughs> We had a lot of very talented guests on the show last series, and uh, one young lady seemed to please everybody. Well, we like to please you, so we've invited her back for the entire series. Will you give a really warm welcome to a dolly, talented little lady, Connie Stevens? <laughs> Connie? Yeah, well, I don't have to tell you that it really is good to have you here. Thank you. I don't have to tell you. I think it's going to be terrific. Comfy? Yeah. No problems? Well, I'll accept one. Tell me who he is and I'll fire him. <laughs> well, there must be something that we can do on these stools for 14 weeks. One very long song. Would you settle for one short, sweet song? Yes. On a very sweet, stunning stool. <laughs> if you let me. What? If it pleases. Yeah. I'd be glad to share your smiles and your sneezes Though I sometimes think the chances are absolutely nil You have to play your cards right And just to know you There's a groovy kind of thrill So romantic <laughs> I am handy round the kitchen Got diplomas both for dawn Stitching oh, on me. If you ever need a shoulder to cry on, call on me. And just to know you is the height of luxury. Well, once or twice, what? tell your friends you think that I am kind of nice. Mother, he's adorable. Got my ticket for a trip to paradise. If it falls through Some things do I'd be sweet to Your relations I got a lot I'll defend you at the United Nations Come to think about it There's nothing much I wouldn't do I heard about you, Englishman As long, long as, as I could spend a lifetime Knowing you Do a little love serial or something. A little love story every week. How about yeah, that? that's it. Like Ben Hur. Yeah. I can play Ben. Yeah. You can play her. <laughs> Come on, think. Uh, an airport. Terrific. Everybody meets at airports, right? Uh, well, how do you see yourself? I'd be a suave, debonair captain with a deep, dark brown voice. He's got a problem. How do you see you? I see myself standing at the top of the stairs with a long mink and a low-cut dress and some gold lame hot pants. No. You want to wear them? You're being cheeky. And another thing. If it falls through. Some shows do. Don't say that <laughs> on the very first show. I've been watching from a distance. Yeah. I've got a feeling you admire my persistence. I do. Where there's life, there's, there's always hope. hope. That's a good philosophy. I'm happy just to know you knowing you know me. Knowing you's a groovy thrill. Such a groovy kind of thrill. We get to kiss and hug and all that stuff in this series? Well, if you like, such a groovy <laughs> kind of thrill.
It's better. I once knew a short-sighted dentist who couldn't tell front teeth from rear. He'd say open wide and walk round to the side, then he'd stick his big drill in your ear. <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're happy to present a very talented young man from the colonies. Won't you give a warm welcome, please, to Jack Benny! Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, first of all, I'd like to tell you how happy I am to be back in London and to be appearing on this show. Now, I must tell you how I happen to be on this particular program. See, about a month ago, I was in Honolulu on a vacation. I believe you call it a holiday, you see. And uh, I needed the rest, you see. When suddenly, I was there one night, I got a long distance call from a fellow by the name of Des O'Connor, <laughs> who evidently has something to do with this show. <laughs> well, anyway, he called me long distance and he said, Jack, he called me Jack. I didn't even know him. <laughs> anyway, he said, Jack, I wish you would do me a favor and fly to London and be on my opening program of the season. And how much money do you want? <laughs> so finally, I said to him, well, Mr. O'Connor, you see, right now, I'm on a holiday and I need the rest. I don't want to leave, you see. I would rather stay here and not work, but if you really need me badly, <laughs> I will come to London and be on your show. But my salary would have to be $12,000 and all of my expenses. Then I was glad that he was paying for the call because there was a seven minute pause. And finally, he said in a sort of a falsetto voice, he said, Jack, we don't pay that kind of money here. Now, the best I can possibly give you is 5,000 pounds and no expenses. Well, I got real angry and I said, look, Mr. O'Connor, you called me. I didn't call you. I said, I don't need that job in London. Now, if you want me, my salary is exactly what I said, 12,000 pounds and all of my expenses. Now think it over and take it or leave it. And I hung right up in his ear. I was so mad. <laughs> then about a week later, when I didn't hear from him, <laughs> then I called him. And I told him, I told him he was sorry for what he said. <laughs> and asked him, I said, Des, <laughs> I said, do you still want me to do that show? He said, yes, Jack, but I can't raise the money. The best I can do is $5,000. He says, now you take it or leave it. <laughs> well, by this time, I was real angry and I was just going to let him have it when the operator cut in and said, you better take it, Jack. He's gonna hang up. <laughs> so aloha, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Desert Panel. <laughs> now, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when I ask for a lot of money to be on a show, that doesn't mean, it's not because I'm mean <laughs> or stingy or miserly. Let's see, what else did he call me? <laughs> well, anyway, let me, to make a long story short, 
Let me say I'm very happy to be here, and I'll see you in a few minutes. You called me out again because I wanted to explain to both you and to the audience that I was just kidding before about in, during my monologue about the fight we had over the telephone. Right? I'm so happy to have you here on the show with me, and I really mean this. But after the show, it would be my pleasure to take you out to dinner, and I'll pay the bill. Well, I'll be just as happy 
to take you out because I'm glad to be here. I'll, we'll go to the dinner together and I'll pay the bill. No, Jack, look, let me impress this upon you. I'd feel much better if I paid. Well, if your health is involved, <laughs> go ahead. So. Jack, you've been coming to England for years now, haven't you? Yes, I've done all kinds of shows here. Did I ever tell you about my success at the London Palladium? Yes, you did, Jack. You told me the last time we met in Trafalgar Square. I don't know whether you recall this. You told me that while you were playing at the Palladium, you were such a success that at the end of the act, you got a standing ovation, and they cheered and cheered and said you were fantastic, and so many bows you took for a quarter of an hour. I told you that about me? I don't even remember our being introduced. <laughs> we weren't. You were just stopping people at random. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, us, I can't understand that. I'm usually so modest about being a hit. But you know, Dad, I can't get over how expensive London has become since I was here last. Oh, come on. All the prices are just tremendous. Well, Jack, it's it ridiculous. Hasn't, it hasn't changed all that much now, has it? Are you kidding? I've only been here two weeks, and 12 pounds went like that. <laughs> Next time, I'm coming alone. <laughs> Jack, since your last visit, our government has set up a whole new currency. You know, it's a whole new English currency, and I'm just wondering, had you had any trouble with that? No, it's no problem. You see, when I come to England, I never convert my money. But, Jack, that, that's silly. I mean, you, you can't spend uh, American dollars, yeah? I know. I know. <laughs> Jack, our money is so simple now. Let me, let me explain it to you, right? You're going to explain money to me? <laughs> yes, I've got to see. Go ahead. Well, now, the decimal system, mm -hmm. our currency, is based upon... It's based upon the pound, in actual fact, right? Right. And this, this is a pound note, mm -hmm. and it's set into units of a uh, hundred now. You mean just like our dollars? Yes. Right? Yes, but this, uh, in American money, would be worth all... Oh, 240? That is worth 240. Uh -huh. Maybe you shouldn't wave it around like that. <laughs> Jack, now, the coins. This is very interesting because this is very new. The coins, this one here, the big one, is 50 new pence, right? That's a, that, that's a dollar 20. That little coin is worth, this one here is worth a dollar 20. Uh huh. Gosh. I guess that's why the cab driver kissed me. <laughs> I think he owes me another one. <laughs> Jack, this, this little coin, this is a ten new pence. Ten pence. Yeah, which is the same as a two-shilling piece. Well, what's that? I don't understand. What's that in American money? That's all I, I want to know. I suppose, Jack, it'd be about uh, 24 cents. It's very handy for tipping. Look, just tell me how much it's worth. Let me figure out how to spend it. Now, Jeff, these are, these are the, uh, the notes, you see. You have the pound notes. One yeah. pound, two pound, you see. Then you have the five pound, right. the ten pound, right. and the twenty pound. Mm -hmm. And those notes together, I suppose they add up in American money something about eighty-five, uh, ninety dollars. No kidding. Mm -hmm. This is... Gee, that's... Yeah. Oh, oh, pardon, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the hardest part of the lesson, right there. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Des. The only way I'm really going to absorb this is by actually using English money, you see. So for practice, why don't we just pretend that you're selling me something? Yeah, but I, I don't have anything to sell you, Jack. Well, anything, anything. Just, we're using that just as an example. All right, for example, I have this, uh, uh, this 18 carat, 25 jewel, this one, wristwatch. If I can get it if off. If you can get it off, I was just <laughs> going to say, yeah. All right? All right. Okay, and uh, you want to buy it, right? All right, then I ask you, of course, how much you want for it. Oh, that's that right? right, that's right. And right. I say something like uh, two pounds. Two pounds for this? Two pounds.
It's a deal. <laughs> we are one pound, two pounds. Thank you very, very much. today. Oh, there he is. He's coming out of that little room. What have you been doing in there? Now then, Dandy, do you know what today is? Today is your birthday. And you've got some lovely presents if you can find them. Now the music will tell you where they are and Dandy will look for them. When the music tinkles, you will be warm. And when the music rumbles, you will be cold. <laughs> Off you go and look for your presents. Warm. 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 Cold. 
party dandy <laughs> that's right two now it's time to give dandy his presents lucy has got a very big one and a not so big one <laughs> the very big one has a big big cake in it and the not so big one has a lot of <laughs> mind. Now, Dandy Sandy, why don't we give Teddy a piece of your lovely cake? That's right. A lovely piece of cake. Is that enough, little Teddy? <laughs> oh, well, little Teddy is going now. Bye-bye, little Teddy. Now, Dandy Sandy and Lucy Luce are left all alone. And Lucy Luce has got a teeny weeny little kiss for Dandy Sandy's birthday. A little kiss, Lucy Luce. Oh, Teddy, Teddy, come on, come and help. Come along, little Teddy. That's right. Now thank little Teddy, Lucy Luce. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And now to show little Teddy you're sorry, Give him the rest of your cake, Dandy Sandy. Come along now. No, 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 no. No, no, you mustn't throw it at little Teddy. If you're not going to let little Teddy have the cake, who is going to get it? <laughs> You. Oh, it's quite nice, actually. Des, I can't thank you enough for sharing your dressing room with me. That's very kind of you. Oh, well, Jack, I'm, you're a guest on the show, and I'm, uh, I'm delighted to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't want to complain. Would you mind just moving over a little bit? Your bouffant hairdo is casting a shadow over my blue eyes. <laughs> hey, Jack. <laughs> you know, they really are blue, aren't they? Bluer than the thumb of a cross-eyed carpenter. <laughs> hey, that was funny, wasn't it? That's pretty funny. <laughs> wasn't that good? That was pretty good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I'd said that. You can if you like. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> well, Jack, I wouldn't steal your material. Even though I admit I'm, uh, I'm tempted. You see, your jokes... Well, uh, they're really fantastic. Well, I mean, fantastic is such a big word, you know. Well, uh, maybe you're right. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe it's not the jokes, Jack. Maybe it's the way you tell them. Your delivery is brilliant. Oh, there you go again. Brilliant, fantastic. 
I mean, now you're overdoing it. Those are exaggerations. Believe me, I'm not that great. Am I? <laughs> uh, Jack, for me, you're the master. You know, when I was a kid, I sort of, well, I patterned myself after you. I used to walk like you walk. I used to talk like you talk. No kidding. Yeah. And I used to spend hours just sitting in front of the mirror, folding my arms and practicing saying, well. well. I can't take credit for all of that. Your poor writers helped me. <laughs> well, Jack, writers or not, you've always been my idol. You're kidding. Yeah. I'm your idol? Uh-huh. I must say, Des, I'm flattered. I really am. The only thing is, Jack, mm -hmm. and I, well, I don't really know how to say this, uh, but would you mind one teeny little bit of uh, constructive criticism? <laughs> you have some constructive criticism for your idol? <laughs> Jack, I know you won't mind me saying this, but I think your timing is a little bit, um, a little bit off. You don't like my timing? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yes, I like it, but it's, uh, it's the pauses. You know those long pauses? A little bit, well, you talk a little bit too slowly. You, you know what I mean? Des, <laughs> how old are you? 38. 38. I have reruns older than that. <laughs> and listen, as long as you have all this criticism, is there anything else you can pick me up on? Well, as a matter of fact, Jack, if you want to know, yes, there is actually. What? It's your walk. You don't like the way I walk? It's okay. It's not funny, is it? I mean, if you're going to do a walk, do a funny walk. Do a, do a grouch on a grouch your box. That was a funny walk. You know? <laughs> you walk like Princess Margaret. Well, I had it first. <laughs> First place, she stole it from me, you know. Well, you, will you excuse me for a moment, Jack? I'll excuse you for life. <laughs> Jack, this is my fan club, Jack. You'll have to excuse me. They adore me, you know. They'll tear me to pieces if I let them in. Excuse me, girl. Now, just yes. calm down. I, I'm yours. It's Jack Benny. The Jack Benny? Yeah, well, who's Jack Benny? <laughs> He's the man that talks slow and walks like Princess Margaret. <laughs> oh, I love oh, him, then. Can so I have your autograph? Can I have his autograph? Oh, please, please, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. Thank you. Please. Certainly, oh, there you are. Oh, is it? Thank you. Oh, isn't this well. wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, a little recitation entitled... How do you do? How do you do? My, my brother and I know everything. <laughs> Your brother and you, you know everything? So do we. <laughs> what is 3,482 new pence divided by eight and a half new pence? My brother knows that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our little recitation entitled, She's Only the... I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. If I gave you a thousand pounds, what would... This is the silliest show I've ever been on. <laughs> I've just got a French poodle for my wife. Sounds like a good swap. You're right. <laughs> What do you get when you cross a cow with a camel? <laughs> I don't know. What do you get when you cross a cow with a camel? Uh, 
I don't know either, but you only have to milk it once every three months. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Ladies and gentlemen, I say, little... I say, can you loan me a pound till I get straight? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our little monologue entitled, She Was Only the Vicar's Daughter. <laughs> he worked so hard, that fella. What's the difference between a female onion and a male onion? I don't know what is the difference between a female onion and a male onion. You don't know your onions, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our little recitation entitled, She Was Only the Male's Daughter. I say, I say, I say. Ladies and gentlemen, a funny thing happened to me in this studio, and this isn't it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our little recitation oh, is... Oh, shut up! <laughs> I say, you leave my granny wife! <laughs> I never touched her, I never touched her! Recitation. He stood on the bridge at midnight. His lips were all a-quiver. He gave a cough. And his leg fell off. And floated down the river. <laughs> Not for all the, the dreams in dreams. <laughs> Not for all the cottons on the shore. I've been, uh, I've been singing songs for about three years, I suppose, and I've been telling jokes for about years, you know, something like 17 years. And this is a little bit of a problem for me, because I find when I sing, I sometimes I want to be funny, you know. And some songs, well, have you ever been in the car or in the bath and you make up your own songs, you know, put your own words to them? And it's usually the great songs that you do it to, you know, songs like, uh, And I wake up in the morning with my hair down in my eyes And she says, <laughs> Or, uh, I kiss your lips and all at once your teeth go flying. <laughs> this is a little trick I've learned, as I say, you know, make up your own words to songs. And uh, the other night I was in a restaurant um, here in London, just around the corner, actually, from the studio. And I was, well, I wasn't too happy with the food that evening, you know, in this particular restaurant. And the service had been even worse. And there was a, a little group in the corner, three-piece group, and they were playing one of the great songs of our time and as I was finishing my dessert which was a, a piece of flan and for any non-British viewers flan is kind of like a piece of pie I'd say piece of pie but it's not gonna rhyme in the song when I get to it it's a piece of flan and as I was finishing that these words came to my mind and now the end is near and I must face the final spoonful <laughs> the soup they call it clear it had no taste but sounded tuneful <laughs> they served each dish with sauce to hide they cooked it in a dry way and more much more than this they threw it mine <laughs> Yes, there was fish on the menu And I bit off more than I could chew They had the nerve to call it trout I ate it up and it swam out <laughs> They served it whole, still in a bowl And threw it mine Steaks, I've had a few, but what we had was really ghastly. And I found what I had to chew was hidden neath the sprig of parsley. <laughs> it had lived a life that's full, had cantered each and every highway and more. Much more than this, they threw it my way. What was that plan? Oh. What happened? 
had it got I searched for fruit But it had not The pastry too Was like cement I took a bite But made no dent The blooming bill Was stiffer still They threw it my Thank you. I'm glad you like that because you know you can't please everybody. This show is going to 14 different countries and people have written to me, American people have written and said, uh, you know, O'Connor, with a name like that, you should sing an Irish song. Well, would you settle for an Irish joke? Would you speak to Desmond? You would, right. My favorite Irish joke is the uh, Irishman who joins the lumber camp in Canada and he wanders onto the camp and the first thing he sees is two men sawing on a log of wood. You know, one of those big saws. There's a big man on one end and a little man on the other, and they're pulling him back and forward, back and forward. And Paddy can't stand it any longer. And he wanders over to the big guy, and he grabs him by the scruff of the neck. He says, if the little fellow wants the sore, let him have it. <laughs> So at least we've pleased some Irish people. And we're going to try and please a different country each week. But you can't please everybody all at once. I mean, it's impossible. And if that isn't a cue for a song <laughs> and a plug for my new album, I never heard one. It's impossible Tell the sun to leave the sky It's just impossible It's impossible Ask a baby not to cry It's just impossible Could I hold you Closer to me And not feel you Going through me Split the second that I never think of you, oh, how impossible. Can the ocean keep from rushing to the shore? It's just impossible. If I had you, could I ever want for more? It's just impossible. And tomorrow Should you ask me for the word Somehow I'd get it I would sell my very soul And not regret it For to live without your love It's just impossible Can the ocean to the shore, it's just impossible. If I had you, could I ever want for more? It's just impossible. And tomorrow, should you ask me for the word, somehow I'd get it. I would sell my very soul. For to live without your love, it's just impossible, impossible, yeah. it's impossible. Well, that's it for now. Next week we'll have with us once again Connie Stevens and Jack Benny, and I hope, of course, that you'll be with us. So until then, remember this.